So gamma knife, gamma refers to the gamma rays which are used in this treatment. And stereotactic refers to the three-dimensional maneuvering of radiational instruments in space. And stereotactic brain surgery is something that was developed at our hospital um, by Victor Horsley um, in the 1800s. And it's after him that the department is named. So he was the first to devise a frame, which is a, a three-dimensional map of the head and it has X and Y and Z coordinates. So every bit of the brain can be mapped against this frame. His original one wasn't designed for humans. It was a few years afterwards, it was adapted, uh, but a gentleman called Lars Lexell at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden used this technology with his own stereotactic frame for the head and pioneered delivering instead of instruments into the brain determined by these coordinates, but radiation. And he experimented with different types of radiation delivery. And he was the inventor of the, the gamma knife. And he found that sending innocuous doses in multiple different directions and having them cross over at a target point to make a noxious dose was a successful way in creating a noxious radiation injury at the focal target, but the surrounding brain having a dramatically lower exposure to radiation. So in that way, he could reach lesions within the brain, one, without opening the head, and two, without causing significant collateral radiation injury to precious structures. So it has been through multiple iterations since. Uh, we now have the icon, and um, Queen Square's built up quite an expertise now in using this newest platform, um, which gives us a few more options for, for treating patients and their comfort. And each year, um, it's, it's an exponential growth in the number of patients undergoing gamma knife radio surgery. As just after the war, um, Lars Lexell was limited quite extensively by the sophistication of the imaging. Now, since CT was invented and then MRI was invented, we now have much more sophisticated imaging that we can um, deliver treatments exactly where we want them. It can, um, if necessary. So it's a day case or outpatient procedure. So the patient comes in in the morning, we apply a frame, which is pinned to the head under local anesthetic. That's the uncomfortable part of the procedure, but most patients tolerate it. And by the time they've, they've been waiting for their MRI, they're, they're very used to the frame and, and are much more relaxed. The actual treatment, you don't feel any sensation of the gamma rays. So the actual treatment's painless itself and they can lie in the gantry and ask for their favorite radio station or just doze off for the treatment. Um, they go home almost immediately afterwards after having a croissant and a cup of tea and the frame is taken off. So in terms of um, repeating the treatment, it certainly can be repeated. There are a small number of patients whose lesions are quite large and if we deliver a one-off dose to that, then the surrounding brain will get a, a bit too much radiation than we're comfortable for. So we often break it up into what we call fractions for those patients. So three is, is, is the commonest number of treatments, but these are a small number of patients. The vast majority will have a one-off, one-day visit and treatment. Can it be repeated again in the future? So for example, patients with brain secondaries, if they develop other little secondaries at other places in the brain, then certainly these can be repeated. Um, in trigeminal neuralgia, if there's a recurrence, then we can also repeat that treatment too. So whenever you treat the brain, there's um, important risks to the surrounding tissue. So brain can receive radiation through this treatment and it can cause irritation occasionally swelling and occasionally seizures. That's in the minority of patients. The target you're treating, so for example, if it's a, a tumor, they can swell. It's usually a, a transient process. They settle down usually um, spontaneously, um, but we do warn patients that, you know, that there can be occasionally disability, but the incidence is very low. And if you compare that to surgery, then 
you've you've dramatically reduced the chance of stroke wound healing problems and if you look at the dvla guidelines if you have open surgery you are restricted from driving for much longer um, than if you've had gamma knife for example so so it shows that although the risks of gamma knife are not zero they're less um, in their magnitude than open head surgery So um, if, it, it depends on the, the diagnostic um, group. So if we take trigeminal neuralgia, for example, um, a patient who has quite classic trigeminal neuralgia. So they have the paroxysmal pain that is zero and then very severe and then settles down to zero, then very severe. So they have episodic shocks. Um, they have the classic triggers, touching the face, chewing, brushing the teeth, cold wind on the face. Um, they responded at some stage to carbamazepine. These tend to be the, the, the predictive factors of one, this being trigeminal neuralgia, and two, them getting benefit from gamma knife treatment. If they have uh, more of a complex um, neuropathy, then that tends to respond less. So it's very important that you work with a neurologist and that fundamental diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia has been made. Otherwise, um, you have disappointing results. In terms of other um, diagnostic groups, I also treat a lot of meningioma. And this is a benign brain tumor, which um, benign in 96% approximately, um, which causes problems by virtue of it being on the inside of the skull. And it can slowly grow and make its presence felt either by causing swelling to the local brain or by squashing the brain. So we tend to treat them when they're reasonably small and certainly when they've started to grow because that avoids the patient having to go through an open head procedure. And given the choice of gamma knife, which is a day case outpatient procedure compared to open head surgery, a lot of them are very keen to, to have the incisionless treatment of gamma knife. So we warn a patient for about two to three days, they may feel headache here, a bit out of sorts, uh, but it's unusual for them to have any severe adverse effects. When the side effects of gamma knife occur, they can be further down the line, three, six, nine months later. Um, so say it's a gentle treatment, but you know, it's, its effects can be delayed. So for example, in trigeminal neuralgia, we're very careful with patients who already have facial numbness because it's possible we can make that worse. And occasionally in a small number of patients, we can trigger a condition called anesthesia dolorosa, which is a painful numbness, which remarkably some patients say is more unpleasant than the neuralgia itself. Thankfully, we've not had that at the Queen Square Amethyst Gamma Knife, but uh, we have to vet patients for this. So um, if you look at the successful efficacy. We tend to tell patients this is good for about three years. There'll be patients who have just a few months of benefit, patients who have years and years and years of benefit, but about three years tends to be the, the ballpark. Um, and of course, trigeminal neuralgia uh, during the course of one's lifetime varies anyway. In terms of adverse effects, it's a small percentage of causing a, a severe adverse effect. So a much lower adverse effect profile than the open surgeries. 